I continue my work here, where I created the most incredible technology that allowed me to enter the interdimensional realm, which lay beyond the normal space-time continuum. I called it the Phantom Zone. Hey everybody, welcome to the Phantom Zone. This is going to be my Krypton Episode 2 video. So they dropped a whole bunch of Easter eggs, like the Green Death, for instance. That's kryptonite, basically. So I'll explain. If you haven't read it, I'll recommend which comic books to read for this series, though. I expect them to go beyond that when we get to Season 2, though. But there's, like, one very specific run that they're pulling from. But for all the Krypton videos that I do, I will do a Legion of Superheroes ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber and leave a Superman-related comment on the video. So the big thing here is that they revealed the Phantom Zone. He activated the Fortress of Solitude. So we activated his grandfather's avatar, which explains how they can keep Sir Bear Senselmi on the TV show. But obviously, Phantom Zone, really big deal. A lot of people asking about whether or not Jarrell created it in the comics. There's a lot of stuff they're doing with this TV show, shifting it backwards by one or two generations. So during that comic book series, it's usually Superman going back in time to Krypton to learn about his family. There was a run back during the 60s. There was one a couple years after that. There was one that was a little more recent. But they're all like really old, super deep cuts. Like most of these are pre-crisis, so a lot of it's been retconned. So it is really useful as a resource. But, you know, next big reveal is that Brainiac has already come to Krypton. And this sort of backdoor confirms my voice of Rao theory because... Listen to the voice of Rao, and then listen to Brainiac's voice from the trailer. May Rao's light forever guide your way. Son of Krypton, your world is at an end. Do you not think that that just sounds like a slightly different version of the same voice? Like, Brainiac is time-traveling from the future to come back and change Krypton. Wouldn't it make sense that the voice of Rao be some sort of Brainiac plant or another version of Brainiac because there's still one in their present day, like 200 years in the past, that's roaming around the universe sucking up planets. The way they introduce the Brainiac mythology is his grandfather discovers the Phantom Zone and the way they describe it is sort of like a subspace layer of reality. So he uses that to quickly travel around the universe, just being a normal explorer. While he's doing that, he sees the wake of Brainiac's destruction, and they put a name on it. So he learns that this threat is eventually coming to Krypton. That's why he freaks out, tells everyone else, and then the council votes to execute him for heresy. But I think part of the idea is theory crafting here, so this is speculation, is that Brainiac had already come to Krypton by the time he had alerted everyone. So he'd already sort of created this theocratic state whereby it was heresy that they suggest the Kryptonians weren't the center of the universe. But if this is a version of Brainiac, no idea if it's the future version of Brainiac who's hiding out underneath this mask or if it's an older version of Brainiac. So just remember that there are a number of different iterations of the character. He evolves over time. So we'll see what kind of comic book twist that they put on this. We got a little more Adam Strange. He explained a little bit more about his Zeta Beams, which is right out of the comics. Still a little ways away from the jetpack, but they made him lose the ball cap. They put him in Kryptonian garb. So I feel like we're probably a season or two away from him wearing a more comic book Adam Strange costume. But we haven't quite got to the point where we've traveled to other worlds like Ran or Thanagar. So one thing at a time, I think they'll introduce those ideas and those characters. Then you'll start seeing him running around in a jetpack. But if you're not familiar with the Green Death that his grandfather name dropped, he says that it happened in their planet's history, so it's long gone. But what happened is, is during the World of Krypton comic book series that I was talking about that a lot of this comes from, Superman was reading his father's journals. He learned about a green plague that had menaced the population. They found the cause was their planet's core had turned radioactive and that eventually led to the planet's destruction. Just one of the reasons why the planet exploded. But that's basically kryptonite. Their planet's core was turning radioactive. The gas was what you would think of as the green plague that was killing the citizens. So if anybody was wondering, kryptonite officially exists on Krypton, the TV show. It's just that because they're on Krypton, they don't have superpowers. So if somebody were to be poisoned by it, it'd be like a normal person being poisoned by radiation. 
The reason why it's such a big deal for Superman is because he goes from being so powerful to so weak so fast. Like the swing is much bigger than a normal person being poisoned by radiation. So just let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about the stuff that they introduced in this episode? I felt like a couple parts of it drug a little bit, but I do like the ideas they're introducing. We still haven't met Black Zero. There are a couple other running storylines as part of the political drama they have going on, the whole Nyssa Vex storyline. I'm kind of hoping that she's tied up a little bit more in the Black Zero. And then obviously you have all the Lita Zod stuff where she was seizing power. There were a couple fight scenes. I felt like they were okay. Georgina Campbell is a fantastic actress, but once you watch Oberyn Martell versus the Mountain, every TV fight just feels like no big deal. Like Aero typically has some of the best fights out of all the DC shows, like down and dirty fights. Sorry. But part of the idea of the Lita Zod storyline, I think, is to show you how General Zod could be so extreme, like how his family and their circumstances could precipitate a personality like the one that he had. So show no mercy, be as hardcore as you can possibly be, protect your people at any cost, even if it means killing the only other member of your race that's alive on planet Earth. On Krypton. The genetic template for every being yet to be born is encoded in the registry of citizens. Your father stole the registry's codex and stored it in the capsule that brought you here. For what purpose? So that Krypton can live again. On Earth. So remains to be seen if she'll go completely off the deep end because she starts off as like this really nice person that's part of a really hardcore family. So I think they just want to show you her slowly getting more and more hardcore. We'll see how nuts that winds up getting, but just let me know in the comments what you guys think of everything so far. And if you didn't see it, they actually just dropped the trailer for the Death of Superman animated movie. So I'll add a link for that at the end of this. But congratulations to the giveaway winner from my Krypton episode one video, Andy Z213. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. There'll be a new round when I post new DC. Roy and Nissa Al Ghul are back on Arrow this week. If you haven't seen that episode, watch it. I'll post my video for that on Friday. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of other stuff dropping, so just look out for that. Click here to watch that Death of Superman trailer, and click here for brand new Avengers Infinity War. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.